Cross products property. Sometimes people call this the cross product multiplication or just cross multiplication. Uh, what this basically allows us to do is take a fraction and multiply its parts in order to simplify this. So if I have something like this, A over B is equal to C over D. If I was to multiply these two together, and these are called the extremes, and I was multiplying these two together, which we call the means, what we could basically say is that the extremes will be equal to the means or the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means. Now, why they're called that, sometimes that's a little bit confusing. Um, so I'm going to try and show you a little bit of why they're called that, um, just so you can maybe understand them a little bit better. So if I look at A over B equals C over D, and I write this out as a ratio, so I write it out what it looks like in terms of A compared to B is the same as C compared to D. Well, if you think about where these are located, those two are like on the very far extremes of this problem. This is the far outside, this is the far outside. If you think about these two, they're in the middle. In the middle, if you're talking about math, is like the average or the means. So that's really what we're looking at is if I multiply the two outside together and the two inside together, or if I was to cross multiply this way and this way, I will get a true statement. All right, so let's look at it with math so we can kind of see how this works. And we'll sort of see, does this actually make sense in terms of a problem? So if I gave you something like this, um, let's do 1 half equals 4 eighths. Now I want to know, are these fractions equal to each other? Okay, well, the, the easiest way to kind of check that is to check the extremes. So I'm going to do 1 times 8. And I want to know, is it the same as if I multiply the means, or the 2, times the 4? So 1 times 8 gives me 8, and 2 times 4 gives me 8. So this is true. Now we can use this for other things later on to be able to check uh, for inequalities to see which fraction is bigger. Um, so we can kind of look at those a little bit. Um, so sometimes you get a problem that says something like this. And I want to know, one third, is that the same as one half? Okay, well if we do that same process, 1 times 2, and 1 times 3, okay, so we do our extremes and our means, 1 times 2 gives me 2, 1 times 3 gives me 3, are those the same? No. So we can now know that those fractions are not the same value, they're not equal to each other. How do I know which one is actually bigger? Well, we can use that a little bit later. I'll show you some tricks on that one later on as we get into solving these a little bit more advanced. Now, how do we use this for more advanced algebra? Sometimes we're going to get a problem that looks like this. One-fifth is equal to x over 20. And they're going to want us to figure out what's the value of that x? Okay, now if it's easy enough, we could probably sit here and guess and figure it out, check, and, and come up with an answer. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to go ahead and do our extremes. 
So 1 times 20. And we're going to do our means. So 5 times x. And we're now going to try and solve this a little bit. So we're going to get an answer that says 20 is equal to 5x or 5 times what equals 20. That's really what this question is asking. 5 times what? Well, how do we undo multiplication? We can just go ahead and divide both sides by 5. And if we do that on this side, we get 20 divided by 5, which is 4. And the 5's here reduce and just leave us our solution. So x would be equal to 4. Okay, so that's how we use the cross products property. Just says that we can multiply the extremes, we can multiply the means, and they should then be equal to each other.